Hi guys, Dr. Jillard again. This is part three of our makeup lecture. The date uh, for the date you missed and today uh, is 1-18-18. And here we go. Let's talk about esophageal carcinoma and we'll see how far we go with this one. So very deadly form of cancer has a very poor prognosis. Five-year survival rate is less than 20%. That's pretty bad, pretty nasty cancer. There's two main types of this cancer, adenosarcoma and a squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, slightly greater than 50%, the adenocarcinoma. Still on the rise, we'll look at uh, this a little bit more in each one of these. And squamous cell carcinoma has been actually de increasing in the Western world anyway. Uh, but it's still the most common cancer worldwide is squamous cell carcinoma. In the West, it's adenocarcinoma. 16,000 new cases are diagnosed each year. Uh, signs and symptoms. So here's a really bad sign. So you have a solid food dysphagia. So the patient, uh, they can't eat. It hurts. It, it it hurts or it's hard swallowing food and they, these are esophageal cancers right we're talking just isolated so they're having trouble and difficulty swallowing di uh, you know chunky solid food um, so but soft food like oatmeal you know things that are more mushy they can they can swallow for a while but then it progresses now they can't even swallow uh, oatmeal anymore uh, they can only have soup and liquids uh, and then they have dysphagia with liquids. That is a really, really bad sign. And then later, the, even a worse sign is they start getting uh, weight loss. Uh, it may or may not be associated with GERD, like the heartburn symptoms. 45% of patients with esophageal adenocarcinoma are, were found to have no uh, GERD or very, very rare GERD. So GERD is not always a sign. Uh, and in the late stages, the presence of, which we talked about in lab, those of you who had lab this week, uh, a, super vent, uh, a supraclavicular uh, lymph node, especially the sentinel node on the left, right? That's, uh, that's, that's a bad one uh, to get. It, it'll, it could be present. Probably will be present. That means it's metastasized. Early cancer diagnosis, uh, so tissue biopsy going endoscopically. If there's anything that looks suspicious, take a biopsy of it. CT is ordered next to uh, see if it's metastasized anywhere else. PET scan is actually has a greater sensitivity than CT uh, for ruling out. Notice sensitivity and ruling out. Uh, snout, SN and out. Did you have your statistics class yet? It's important to... And especially at this college, we're very evidence-based. You should know about sensitivity and specificity. I think I have a, a video on that somewhere. Um, anyway, uh, so sensitive, PET scan is greater sensitivity. Better for ruling out uh, esophageal cancer than CT is. PET scan is very expensive, not widely available. Stanford has one, but okay, anyway. Uh, let's talk a little more specifically about squamous cell carcinoma. This is a text uh, called Slicinger, 10th edition. Love this text. It's a thousand times better uh, than Robbins. Robbins just doesn't tell the story. You can't, you can't get the story just by reading Robbins. Robbins is a board book, th though, but uh, this this tells a bunch better story. I've actually probably spent over a thousand dollars putting this course together uh, so far. Um, and but I have a pretty good story with all these books that I've bought. Anyway, squamous cell carcinoma, most common form of cancer in the world. It used to be in the United States, but now it's uh, it's been beaten out by adenosarcoma or adenocarcinoma. It's diminished in the United States uh, as well as other industrial nations. Probably they're not 100% sure, but they think it's because the rates of smoking and alcohol use may have went down. A little bit which are some big risk factors for the development of squamous cell carcinoma. Esophageal carcinoma is the number one again esophageal carcinoma in the United States. That's a good test question isn't it? Uh, 
and it's uh, look at this number this is not good it's increased uh, over the last couple decades uh, it's increased by over 400 percent in white people it's like holy smokes that's a huge that's a crazy increase they're, they're worried about this they're not sure 100 percent sure some of the leading theories are because we're knocking out everybody's freaked out about HP which we'll talk about did we talk about HP H pylori I think we did did we no I don't think we did yet we will talk about it in depth uh, but um, yeah we're in the West we're, we're getting rid of antibiotics knocking out HP great takes care of the GERD uh, but GERD uh, if you decrease the HP that takes uh, if you knock out the HP for for ulcers, it, it causes stomach ulcers and other things. Well, gastritis we'll get into, but if you knock out the HP, HP also decreases acid production. So if you knock out HP, it's going to increase acid production, and therefore increases the amount of people who have GERD, which increases the amount of people who have uh, Barrett's esophagus, which increases the number of people who transform from Barrett's esophagus, which is precancerous. Uh, into uh, esophageal adenocarcinoma. So it could be because of this little bug. Uh, the prevalence of, of this type of cancer in the United States is about 5 in 100,000. Uh, it's eight times more common in men than women. We're not sure why that is. Five times more common in whites than African Americans. And GERD converting to Barrett's esophagus greatly increases the chance sixfold uh, chance uh, increases the chance of it developing so if you go through the stages of GERD then to a Barrett's esophagus you got to really watch out for the development of adenocarcinoma uh, obesity uh, is also a risk factor we believe it's because it increases the chances of GERD a threefold increase smoking is a two twofold increase okay Let's look at esophageal varicosities. Let's, uh, we're going to talk about varicose veins more in CVP pathology, but let's look at some esophageal varicosities. Uh, so the esophagus, of course, is lined with arteries and veins like every other tissue in the body. So you can actually get varicose veins of the distal esophagus. And they, if they rupture and start bleeding, that's not a good thing. People can die from that. In fact, the mortality rate of a first-time bleed is 20%. That's huge. Almost a quarter percent of patients die if they get a if they get a bleed here. So, uh, clinical important reason where this may occur: uh, the distal esophagus and the gastroesophageal junction is the spot where it usually occurs. Okay, normal esophagus is there's our normal again pretty looking esophagus. You don't see any of that nasty red columnar tissue here. Now what do you see? Ooh, it doesn't look so pretty anymore, does it? Nope, we got some big gnarly uh, varicose veins. They're varicose, ver esophageal varicosities, nothing more than varicose veins. And can you feel these? Completely asymptomatic. So if you can't see them, I think everybody can see them, but there's the little red stars. You can see them there. Okay, number one cause of varicose veins is liver problems. If you get cirrhosis of the liver, or if you get hepatitis, you could also do it. Um, that's a problem. Uh, because if you get cirrhosis of the liver, remember we talked about this in class, you have cavo blood, you have the inferior vena cava, filtering through the liver. You also have the hepatic portal vein and the portal system feeding through the liver from the bottom up. So if you get cirrhosis of the liver and the cells start to becoming destroyed and scarring up, it scars up, uh, that scar interferes with the microcirculation. So it's harder to get blood through the liver as the cirrhosis gets worse or worse, or the hepatitis. Any type of scarring in the liver makes it difficult to move blood through the liver. And it's just like that traffic accident scenario we talked about. If there's an accident, 
stuff starts backing up on the highway and highway one, accident in Gilroy that southbound the traffic backs up in Morgan Hill then it backs up into San Jose then eventually all the way to Milpitas same kind of scenario so the worse the cirrhosis gets the blood backs up further and further and further and it can back all the way up through the portal system as we'll see here in a minute all the way to the esophageal veins uh, and as they back up more and more they get bigger and bigger and bigger remember veins are a little stretchy uh, and if they get too big they can burst and start rupturing so that's kind of the story uh, so anything that is a traffic jam scenario anything that blocks a blood flow through the liver can cause this traffic jam backup of blood flow just a semiasis in developing countries uh, is very common uh, a neoplasm cancer of the liver can do it uh, thromboembolic disease thrombo is a thrombus formation that's like a pre uh, pre embolism or like a blood clot uh, and embolism means the, the thrombus breaks loose and forms a ball it's like a bomb flying through the bloodstream that's an embolism so it's thrombo if you get a uh, blood clot in the cobble system and it gets stuck in the liver that can definitely cause a traffic jam thrombus formation significantly narrows the portal vein same story get the backup etc so everything I just said instead of blood flowing through the distal esophagus uh, or flowing you know nice and neatly through the or from the distal esophagus back to the uh, vena cave, or back to the portal system back to the liver it can't there's a traffic jam so you get a backup all the way into the distal esophagus uh, and you can start to get a bleed the portal esophageal bleed they're not made to handle increased pressure they're not made to handle a traffic jam and they can start leaking okay let's do some anatomy here's the liver remember the portal vein is right here coming out and there's a splenic the two main we looked at in gross true we looked at the splenic vein here superior mesenteric vein is off the screen here down here uh, we didn't look at this first branch I think it got destroyed in dissection no 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 now nah, we've never seen this uh, we usually saw I think I showed people in my lab a little stub of the left gastric vein I've never seen one intact but not only does it supply the the lesser curve of the stomach it gives off a lower esophageal branch and the, these are the, the blood these are the ones that varicose right here the co the uh, portal system actually anastomosis with veins from the caval system so that's the lower esophageal azygous vein remember that azygous system so these can the traffic jam can even start to extend into here uh, and cause varicose veins that way as well uh, or if you get a tumor in the zygous vein or something a lymph node compressing the zygous vein you can get a backup of blood going this direction that can also cause it it's usually a problem with the liver though okay uh, the official definition is intravenous pressure greater than 12 I would never ask you that greater than 12 millimeters per mercury I did put a star by this one though uh, venous uh, veins become dilated and tortuous as this pressure gets to the certain threshold and they can rupture cause severe bleeding clinical signs uh, of someone because it's a, usually asymptomatic first signs are could be you know, death but some signs uh, you, you could have a really black tarry colored stool uh, these are called uh, melena or melina Yep, tomatoes tomatoes uh, or a melanic stool so these black tarry looking stools acute hemorrhage of the varicosities is one of the most common causes of death in patients with chronic uh, portal hypertension so it's a big problem here's another little cartoon so here's the cobble system here or this is the azygous system uh, coming into the uh, the portal system here and you can see these blood veins are all torturous this patient has problem with the liver blood's not getting through so the traffic is backing all the way up into here causing things to leak so 
Here's some another picture of it. Okay, that's the end of that. Let's uh, okay. Let's cut it off right there. I'm going to lose track of these pretty soon, uh, but we'll put Zanker's diverticulum on another one. See you in a minute.